writings, you, you often describe the, the struggle, the conflict that we humans engage in as we're caught in between sort of our, our dual nature. We're locked into a finite body, each with our own life story and melodrama, and yet simultaneously we, we are like God. We, we partake of the, the entire cosmos. Yes, I call that the reconciliation of irreconcilables. <laughs> because it's very difficult for our minds to accept this uh, uh, dual nature of uh, um, identity. And um, I think it's, um, we're cutting right into the main problem of uh, in psychology. I think uh, most people um, have a bad self-image or overcompensate or don't know how to assess their value in any way. <clears throat> And um, of course, it's very difficult to, um, to accept what my ca father calls the aristocracy of the soul together with the democracy of the ego. Or he calls it um, this, the greatest pride in one's divine inheritance and humility about one's inadequacy in bringing it through. And yet still um, accepting the divinity of one's being. I think as, as Christ said, be perfect as your father. <clears throat> You know, somehow listening to you talk about this peculiar dilemma that we humans are, are in, it, it's making me feel that the whole thing is very humorous. Yes, I think there's some point about laughing about things we don't understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it, it's almost ironic somehow and, and maybe quite ridiculous that as, as cosmic beings we're always finding ourselves in, in such dilemmas. Yes, well, the Sufis say, um, oh man, if you only knew <clears throat> that you're free, it is your ignorance of your freedom that is your captivity. And I would add, um, if only you knew what the potentials in your being are, you'd realize that it's your ignorance of those potentials that limit you to the your inadequate sense of uh, uh, well, your self-image or your inadequate self-esteem or okay. denigrating yourself. Mm -hmm. as, as I look through your writings, I get a sense that, that there's just vast, almost infinitudes when we talk about human potential and the levels of being. We, in a sense, what you seem to do is look at the spiritual writings of every religion and, and tradition and and somehow uh, assemble them all together so that it's as if we have choirs of angels and, and layers and layers of, of spiritual vibrations interpenetrating us and that's who we are rather than the, these tiny people living out their lives. Well, you're interpreting my teaching better than I could do. <laughs> you're saying it very beautifully indeed and that is how I feel. Um, I also include uh, not just the religions, but uh, the teachings of, uh, for example, uh, um, C.J. Jung, for example. Carl Jung, the great Carl Swiss Jung, psychiatrist. The, um, yes, because what we are doing is really um, uh, to individuate the uh, unconscious, the collective unconscious. Um, that's what we are really talking about, getting in touch with um, uh, transcendent, what I call cosmic and transcendental dimensions of our being, of which we are not aware, and we only identify ourselves with, let's say, the apex of the cone that's upside down, whereas we um, really are, uh, we belong to the whole cone, or our being extends to the whole cone. <clears throat> and uh, so it's just a matter of uh, gaining awareness of other dimensions of one's being beyond the commonplace ones. It's almost as if uh, that anything wonderful about ourselves that we can imagine, that we are. Yes, well, there's a great power in creative imagination. Now, of course, there's a difference between creative imagination and fantasy. Mm -hmm. And I tried to get as clear as possible about the difference. I think it is um, um, creative imagination is... Um, somehow monitoring the uh, programming of the universe um, uh, and uh, fantasizing is um, uh, getting alienated from the order, from the overall order. And when I talk about an order, I don't mean a static one. I'm talking about a dynamic order. It's, it's almost as if perhaps fantasy is only the first stage of creative. 
imagination. Um, well, I think that it probably does play a part mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, create, in the act of imagination because, as you probably know, um, uh, Dr. Prigogin, who is uh, one of the leading scientists of our time in Brussels, um, uh, calls creativity a fluctuation from, uh, 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 let's say, a st uh, <coughs> sclerosed equilibrium. So that uh, every time, so the order of the universe could be looked upon as, uh, uh, could be static if it were not continually being fluctuated away from its equilibrium. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is what we're doing in, in, in our creativity. It is, I, well, I call it um, exploring what if. <clears throat> what if things were, uh, what if we, th how would it look if we w looked at this problem in a different way than the way we've been looking so far? That's creative imagination. Mm -hmm.